So one membrane like the tenuous, where space is a problem, quality of water, where the customer is looking for a recycle, MBR is the best solution. So advanced treatment technology. So our actually we can define the wastewater recycling technology in the three, three ways: recycle, reuse, soap, and minimum liquid discharge. Well, first we have to go for recycle reuse, rest is reject, and minimum liquid discharge. If you go for a two-stage RO process and zero liquid discharge is the evaporator. After two-stage RO, you have to put in the evaporator. So these are the tertiary treatment technologies. I have to uh, give different filtrations and the organics remove. Then membrane technology, we have discussed the microfiltration because every it is a range of process, microfiltration, ultrafiltration, nanofiltration, reverse osmosis. So reverse osmosis, if TDS is an issue, then we have to go for reverse osmosis. So these are the water recycling plant and membrane technology with solar evaporation system, where space is a problem. We have done a JLD plant in the RBI, in the Salboni itself, where the treated water after two stage RO. So we have they, they, there is a plenty of split. We go for a solar evaporation pond and the RO reject is handling there and the 100% recycle. But stay, where space is a problem, ME plus uh, MBR, but that is not established. The client is, uh, the customer is not going on to because of the cost and the power energy requirement is very high, very high. So this is the conventional activated slurk process. You can see the secondary clarifier sand filter and everything you can replace with a GWID. This is the GWID is the patented of the uh, switch and G. So this you can replace it. So like JLD system, JLC in fact help you to meet the legislative norms prescribed by state pollution control board. And also it enhance your corporate image because while uh, like pharma company, they are going to export any food processing industry, they are going to export, they go for uh, JLD, otherwise it may not in today's world. So process schematic for the JLD, phase one is the influent treated water going to the uh, RO, then the reject RO, it goes to evaporation, crystallization, solid waste. So this is the pictures of multi evaporators. So one case study is example, I quickly shared with the two, three uh, minutes, the almost going to conclude. This is uh, one of the food processing industry. They have a, in, it is in the Chennai. Uh, so food processing industry, 350 KLD capacity, ETP. And they are buying water, entire water, they are on the tanker. And per day, they are water buying per month 15 lakhs of rupees. So see, one year they are buying around 1.8 quote water buying. And after that, they have to treatment. So they have process to go the 350 KLD ETP so that they can go for a recycling process. So initially, the they have based on the conventional solution. They are not not knowledge well. They are going to the because the COD load is around ten thousand and DOD is three thousand to five thousand. So that's why they go for a USB followed by aeration one, aeration two, secondary clarifier followed by PSA, PCA. Then with a single stage RO, sixty percent recovery. And then they have a small ME. They are going to this. So. After that, uh, my visiting, I have replaced it. It has been after we have uh, replaced it with this one. So enter because the high oil and grease is there. We advanced membrane-based solution with the DAP technology because DAP a clarifier we install followed by aeration tank, then MBR, then UF followed by two-stage RO. So raw water saving cost they eight to ten lakhs per month. And USB, PSA, ACF replaced by MBR with a water quality. It is a uh, BOD less than five and the COD is less than 50. So this is the scenario and the project cost come down to while USB and the aeration, PSA, PARO, it cost around 2.5 to. And this cost come down to because MBR takes very small space. Though MBR initially is costly, but for that, the it is not it has been calculated out it is less than two pro so so this is the great achievement so but in fact the project has awarded but due to the pandemic we are unable to uh, further uh, work on the subjects so in fact indian 17 billion dollar water recycling industry government is planning to put, run the thermal power plants coal mines all the coal mines to with the treated water and in fact, this will can help to meet the long-term challenges of the depleting ground out and surface water sources. So 
so what are the needs of the industry so identify the contribution of water bill so we have to go for the water bill the source of water availability then water flow meters overall water monitoring system thorough analysis of the each effluent stream then detailed techno commercial feasibility studies in a regular interval is to be carried out and define targets to reduce water consumption and conduct water quality assessment in a regular interval so finally we need to bring a symbiosis between water and wastewater management in the quest of sustainable development so this is the with this i am on to the thank you all yeah thank you so, yeah. thank you dr thank you dr thank you for your excellent yeah. deliberation so time and, is short uh, but yeah definitely actually th i i thank you for on behalf of the institute of engineers west bengal state center now i request uh, professor s k das professor das can you can you hear hear me actually uh, professor das is telling that from the organizer he has uh, he has to uh, mute it or on mute there is a sound yeah, yeah. related okay so uh, mr Mr. Thakur, can you make Professor S K Das, Professor S K Das, as presenter now? Unmuted. Doctor Das. you have been you have been you have been given the presentation uh, you have been made the presenter can you can you start your lecture now what the das can you hear professor das Can you start now? It's a moment. Sir, you are not audible, Professor Das. Okay, so uh, Mr. Mr. Sushant Kumar Rai, can you can you uh, Mr. Sushant Kumar Rai, are you there? In what about unmute? Could it be sharp, Nagi? Oh, Tali, kichu technical. Oh, pade gora dekche. So I okay. Okay, so uh, in order to resolve the technical glitch. So I uh, move on to the speaker. I request uh, Mr. Sushant Kumar Rai. Yes, yes, sir. No issues. Yeah. So, Mr. Rai, you have been you have been made as presenter. So, you can you start your your address? Come here. Start for explorer. Egi, pull that. Okay. So, you have opened your file. That pull, pull. Goal, come here. Explorer. Egi, pull that. Pull. Can you see my face, uh, screen? Hello. Yes, yes, we can see your screen. My screen is visible. Screen. Yeah, it is visible. It is, okay. it is visible, okay. and you are audible as well. So, uh, okay. requesting you to okay. kindly. Start. Okay. Okay. Good evening, everybody, and uh, thank you, Mr. Anirban Das, Dr. Anirban Dasto, respected chairman, honorary secretary. panelist and the participant a very good evening to all of you see <clears throat> just now we had a very uh, technical uh, presentation by dr asim bhattacharya but uh, i not talk anything on technical this is a simple understanding of what is sustainability and what is the health uh, safety on it 
because until or unless sustainability doesn't, uh, doesn't mean anything if we are not able to protect safety, health, and welfare of the uh, most valuable resources of the organization. Those are the operators, basically. So I thought I'll just try to give some uh, areas, uh, point out some areas where this can be, I mean, uh, visualized. My presentations will be into five, uh, four parts, basically. First, I'll give a brief history. Brief history in the sense, the sustainability, the word, is not new. The, since industrial, uh, uh, industrial civilization, maybe 5,000 years ago, we are aware about this word. We are aware of this word, sustainability. OK. And uh, even those days also, uh, if we uh, uh, look at that, uh, uh, Mahindra, uh, uh, Mahindra and uh, this Harappa, there you will find there are uh, some drains, underground drains, and even they wish to collect water at the roof, and those uh, water is to go down to the ground, uh, I mean, the water tank uh, for sustainability. Okay, so sustainability is not a, a new thing, and uh, Ancient uh, days, ancient days, this uh, water sustainability method used to be wells, aquifers, dam reservoirs, channels, and waterways. Okay, these were there in earlier days also. But my point is different. You have to balance between these two. What is this two? It is not only that you talk on recycling of wastewater, you, but at the same time, we should also think about wastewater, I mean, as, as well as water waste. We should try to consume, optimize, and uh, the use of water also at a different, uh, different uh, applications. Maybe it is industrial, maybe it is uh, agriculture, or maybe domestics, or commercial. That is also very important, but we are mostly neglecting that. If we look at, in, uh, look at my next slides, We'll see. Sorry. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay. We'll see. And these are the sustainable component. It is not only water, it is energy, food, and all intervene, infrastructure development, education. This all talks about sustainability for, uh, for preserving uh, for today and for future also. Now, this is a very important uh, thing. Like, uh, we do not know how H2O means water embedded in our life. See, if we look at it, 0.1 gallon to produce, the one gallon of water is required to produce one kilowatt of natural gases. Similarly, for hydraulic uh, energies, uh, one kilowatt of hydraulic electricity, hydroelectricity, 18 gallons of water is required. Okay, similarly, six. 66 gallons of water is required uh, for one kilowatt of biomass bio energy. So like this, you just, like we can do it, uh, uh, I mean, a good job in water sustainability if we can consume our electricity at our domestic area and industrial also. So that indirectly gives the, uh, I mean, these are basically, uh, we can say, uh, I mean, it can give a, a very uh, a direct impact on the water sustainability. Another thing is agriculture. Agriculture, those who are rice eater, if we look at it, 2,800 liters uh, of water is required to produce one kg of rice. Okay. And it's a simple calculation. If we think of a family who is consuming one kg of rice in a day, then he is basically consuming 84,000 liters of water. And if a household water filter we have developed, technologically, we have developed a lot of uh, water purifier, RO type, and all these things, UV ray type. But in those uh, water filters, we have seen that for getting a one liter of uh, drinking water, we are wasting basically four liter of feed water. That means 75% of water is waste. So we have to, I always say, we have to balance not only on the recycle, but also 
waste water, water waste also. So this developing these technologies also, we should have in our mind sustainability of water. We should preserve water for our features also, present and future. So 80% of water reaching household in India is basically drained out as waste through storage. This water can, can be utilized in a better, much better way. Okay, next, if we look at the <coughs> industry, as far as industry is considered, thermal power industry, they consume and discharge the highest level of water per annum. Even in, uh, in uh, petrochemical, since I belong to a, uh, petrochemical industries, they consume almost, even the refineries are, refineries, uh, refiners are consumed, uh, I mean, they generate wastewater equivalent to four times or 1.4 times or maybe 1.5 times of the crude they are processing. So if we can, if we can work on that side, like consumption we can reduce, that also basically gives a, a better uh, understanding of sustainability. So sus uh, sustainable water management is nothing but we are preserving water, uh, uh, our uh, resources, natural resources, for taking into account needs of uh, account demand, I mean, needs of future and uh, present and future demands, human demands, basically. So, wastewater, uh, I need not explain it what is wastewater. I'll go to the next slides. This is basically the typical water, uh, wastewater treatment process. Typical water wastewater treatment process. And at the same time, what is it generating? It is generating a lot of sludge, solid weights. What is happening to that? It mostly goes for landfilling. Either it is uh, for landfilling or it is buried in the, uh, in the land. So it is indirectly, we are again harming to the environment because we are spoiling the Soil, uh, soils. Okay. So generally, this sludge constitute of carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, phosphorus, and many metals also. Maybe some heavy metals also are there. Toxicity are there. So until unless we uh, neutralize it properly and we are just dumping it or land, uh, landfilling it, then this is not a good idea of uh, uh, doing a, a sustainability study or sustainability work. Uh, for uh, water, wastewater. Okay. So, what is the future? We should think it this way. Today, wastewater treatment and removal of biogenic, uh, uh, removal of biogenic energy. Tomorrow, we should think it like that. Change of priorities. What is the change of priority? Preserving natural resources for future generations. Okay. You have to change the priorities. You have to preserve or maybe optimize consumption of natural resources. Second, minimizing of water footprints. Okay, water use in relation to consumption. Okay, then the use of treated wastewater in the production or in the process, uh, wastewater as process water in the wastewater treating treatment plant. Okay, that can be used as a process water for the wastewater treatment plant. We can also think it like this, use of heated uh, wastewater in the production of energy and uh, energy plant and algae. That will save the environment. And recovery of raw material for wastewater. These are the, I mean, thoughts for the future. We should think it in this direction as well. Today, we are, what we are, what we are doing, we are disposing soil sludge. Tomorrow, what we should think for tomorrow? Tomorrow, we should think for recovery of raw materials, uh, or, or raw metals, or <coughs> raw metals from the Swiss slide. Energy production from the Swiss slide. Okay, disposal of industrial waste. Today we are, today we are thinking inflation of biogas energy. Tomorrow, we should think self-sufficiency of WTP heat and electrical energy. We can use that energy and for, for electrification of the w, WTP area or not. And surplus energy can be used to supply external urban facilities. 
So it is not only that development of new new technologies, but simultaneously we should concentrate on this side for future. Okay. Today, like we have we have been exporting, I mean exporting food grains like rice, wheat, and all. So for one ton of food grains, we are basically, I mean, uh, losing. Uh, virtual water of like uh, one k uh, one kg of rice consume uh, I mean, uh, contain one two thousand eight hundred liters of water. So just imagine how much water virtual water we are exporting. So that is an, another way of I mean linking it. Now all said and done, technologies are coming up, but who will maintain? They it, it is our workmen, resources, they are going to maintain. So we must have some protection for them. Okay, so what is the protection? Until unless we have a protection for them, integrating, integrating safety and healthy into the sustainable, sustainable uh, I mean, uh, the sustainability provider does not make any difference if you cannot integrate it. So, let us first see what the, what the worker in a treatment plant does. He does day-to-day -day operation, maintenance, troubleshooting, and handling of special problem municipal or uh, industrial or other wastewater treatment. So he is exposed to a lot of hazards. So these hazards we have to first identify. We must do it wherever we are doing any uh, we start a different plan. We must study the risk hazards, hazards, uh, hazard, risk and hazard. We do a risk assessment uh, for that particular area for the people and the system also. Okay, these are the general three types of exposure risk are there with the uh, operator, with the worker in the uh, waste water treatment plan, biological, chemical, and metals. And this, all these biological, chemicals, and uh, metals. They are basically, uh, I mean, they make, uh, it comes from the basic. It, it may be from the, and these are bacteria and viruses and all these things are there. But this area where they are exposed very high is the area uh, air stripping from of wastewater, bubble aeration. These are very, I mean, dangerous areas because those uh, things come uh, comes through the uh, through inhal inhalation and skin. Okay, affected areas of the body initially include nose and throat, upper respiratory, and then it goes to the lower respiratory tract. So, these all the areas, whoever is the technology level, developer, he has to take proper care of this risk uh, factor for the worker. So, I'll give you five uh, uh, steps. Uh, for uh, this uh, safety steps, but before that, uh, along with that, these are conventional safety uh, issues for water operator. These will be there. Along with that, there will be five steps. These are generally most of the industries they are following. Uh, the, I mean, safety for confined space, safe lifting, then fire safety and extinguisher. These are already there, but machine guarding walking and walking surfaces, everything is generally maintained. But what about this uh, five safety steps for specifically for wastewater treatment? One is basic safety requirement. Every wastewater treatment plant must have its own basic safety requirements. Because that from the risk assessment, we have to identify what is that extra that is required for those, uh, I mean, worker or operators. And so has this uh, internal list of safety protocol or can be perhaps had if, he, if they are not con, uh, competent, they can hire a consultant also. Second tip is that how to handle two groups. Many cases, many uh, outsider, they come and uh, make a, uh, want to make a visit, want to make a visit to the wastewater treatment zone as if it's a theoretical part. So in order to handle these groups, what is required? Assign at least two employees 
to guide visitors to the plan. Ensure visitors remaining safe at all times and seek advice from the medical professional. Most cases what happened, we are not taking medical professionals in the premises into the loop. So they have to be informed on such cases. And even for most of the treatment plant also, the medical professional has to be attached to that plan, to, to, to close, so, I mean, operators, so that they can have a regular health monitoring or health, uh, I mean, uh, measures. Number three is keep an eye on aeration system. This is very difficult and the most dangerous area. Monitor all of your air, uh, <coughs> all of your air delivery uh, modules, tanks, etc., etc. Inspect the aeration tank to ensure there is a good condition and find if the distance pressure of the blower is okay or not. Otherwise, there will be back pressure generation. It will become accumulation of, uh, I mean, gases, vapors. Uh, then you may need to give your turbo blower, or if it is required, you can provide that also. And your aeration system will always be a live blood of your water, uh, water treatment plan. Okay, so as long as you keep your eye on the system, you can have a, uh, I mean, to probably turn aeration. Next is your lighting. Most cases, the lighting is not, uh, I mean, very uh, adequate in that, those areas. So it is very important, important for water treatment facilities, wastewater treatment facilities. The lights play a big, a big part. Here is what is you do, should do for lighting system. Turn the lights off when finished in a certain part of the plan. Use as much mutual lighting as, uh, much natural lighting as possible. Swap current light bulb with the LEDs. These are the standing, I mean, uh, I mean, I mean, I should say safety tips uh, stay for the wastewater treatment area zones. Okay. Then wastewater treatment plants have unique hazards. You must require, I must identify those unique hazards and provide the footwear. Thank you. Footwear of your uh, staff member, providing uh, plenty of personal hygiene requirements and products, give all protective, uh, I mean, equipment for the uh, hazards uh, to, to, I mean, protect from the uh, hazards. Okay. And this is a very important thing, the employer responsibility. What is employer responsibility? Each worker and operator has to give, be given the proper admission, proper PPE. They should be able to make very clear, they should, uh, un un understanding, the MSD, MSDS and SOP. So, uh, SOP is must. Most many cases, SOPs are not available or even those operators also don't follow SOPs. There has to be a check, especially for especially for handling chemicals and other polys, uh, polyactyl uh, hydrocarbon and alkalis and et cetera, those are just the material. Occupational health safety bulletin. We should have a special bulletin for Wastewater treatment plant, uh, uh, I mean, uh, areas. Okay, operation. Then, permissible level. They should be made, uh, I mean, aware of the permissible level and all. And by focusing on all these things, we can work out also do's and don'ts in respective work areas. So, that and those as well has to be displayed also. Displayed also. So beware of not just visible water consumption, also uh, water consumption, but you should have a visual uh, conscious. You should be conscious for visual uh, virtual water uh, footprint also. Okay, use water in all form judicially. Encourage, uh, I, I mean. The use of water and the reclaim and discharge sludge, keeping environmental and health safety in top priority. Uh, extending my heartiest thanks to the organizer to, for giving me the opportunity to share my thoughts in the August event. And thank you so much.
thank you mr rai thank you for your very lucid and elaborative presentation on touching on various aspects of wastewater treatment and uh, for nice comparative analysis uh, capturing the different segments of industry thank you mr rai so i now request uh, mr kumar vishwas actually due to some technical glitch we were we are we were not being able to hear from you sir so i now request uh, in, uh, mr thakur from nsdf to kindly give the uh, give mr kumar vishwas to uh, presenter right so that uh, he can uh, start his uh, deliberation yeah mr vishwas you are now given the presenter right thank you very much good afternoon or good evening everybody i am so sorry for keeping you waiting for due to certain technical issues and uh, i am really honored and thankful to west bengal state center of the institution of engineers for giving me this opportunity to speak a few words uh, on west water treatment for sustainable development and i will be focusing on a precise subject of waste water treatment of petrochemicals industry and i before i start i must thank professor n k brahma professor s k das sri anirban datta sri surajit ghosh for continuously helping me to overcome certain technical difficulties we have been facing uh, since uh, 3:30 or so anyway better late than never uh, the topic is waste water treatment for sustainable development uh, so we will start with the sustainable development as we talked about sustainable development uh, we go back to united nations which had a conference on 25th and 27th of september 2015 and where they have drawn an action plan or for the sustainable sustainable earth sustainable situation sustainable development for the earth which is to be achieved by the year 2030 and when such a big target is taken where all the countries developed and developing are involved <clears throat> a road map is required to be drawn so united nation has drawn up a road map which is known as sdg sustainable development goal so there are 17 goals in that we are not going into the nitty gritty but it has been mandated for all the nations through cooperation and brotherhood that all those goals are to be met so that by the year 2030 this mother earth becomes a good place to live with so we talked about the goal number 12 which united nation has related to this month current month of august 2020 it talks about responsible consumption and production of available resources we know the available resources in this world is very limited but we have to use them for the mankind in a judicious manner so when we talk about resources we come down to the petroleum products petrochemicals and petroleum i'll be using interchangeably during the uh, du during the discussions the petroleum and is the driving force for the whole of i'll come to the presentation also if you uh, just bear yes okay 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 uh, please bear with me mr vishwa mr vishwa actually your presentation is not uh, visible can you just open the presentation and share your because screen is shared can you just open the presentation sure sure this yeah the last one yeah is it visible yeah it is now just file is open uh, yeah yeah here it is. 
is it okay now yeah fine. yeah fantastic so like, yeah, just please continue sir thank you thank you fine so uh, we come to the point that uh, we, this is the outline uh, we are already in the first point we are talking about sustainability and uh, that uh, sustainable development goal of united nations and after crossing that we have come to the petrochemical sector two three uh, recent environmental incidents i would like to quote to show the how the petrochemical industry if not handled properly can have an impact on our environment the first uh, we we know the uh, uh, tourist paradise is that uh, mauritius as a beautiful island country, island nation what has happened recently a japanese uh, bulk carrier has run aground uh, near the coast of that particular island and as a result about 4000 tons of fuel oil has leaked into the ocean water the white sand of the of the beach has turned black the film of water has covered the blue water of the ocean and the precious reef coral reef has been covered with a petroleum oil which is the that coral reef is the house of millions of uh, aquatic life so this has endangered the life there an unfortunate part a small country like uh, mauritius doesn't have the capability to fight this natural disaster back home national green tribunal ngt has imposed a fine of 25 crores last month on indian oil corporation for its failure to protect the environment by its panipat refinery it has been claimed by ngt that the panipat refinery has violated and as a result the human settlings flora and fauna in the vicinity of the panipat refinery has suffered a lot so it has been told to deposit the money of 25 crores within a month's time and with that money the damage to the environment what has been caused will be recovered as per plan as per plan which will be drawn in 3 months period of time now from the panipat haryana we go to assam there also ngt has levied a fine of 25 crores to oil india limited because of its failure to cap and uh, and to put up the fire due to blow out which has happened into the bagchan which was involved in the exploration and production activity of the in the bagchan area so there are many many examples we have quoted only these two three examples to show that the petrochemicals which is important for our day to day life can have a very adverse effect into the on the environment there can be two ways uh, either through water or air pollution we are coming back to the water segment of the petrochemical industry in the next step petrochemical so before we go to the petrochemical industry i would like to give an idea of the size of the canvas we are going to draw india is a country of population of 1.3 billion which is only second in the world next to the china and logically this country we are having an insatiable demand for petrochemical products our majority of energy demand is coming from petroleum or petrochemicals just to quote a few figures in the year of 2019 and 20 india has consumed an astonishing figure of 213.7 million metric ton of petroleum products and out of which uh, a only a barely 30 or 33 million metric ton has been produced by india rest 83% has been imported and uh, today india has a huge refining capacity which is 250 million ton as on 31st march of 2020 so this petroleum industry is the backbone of our economy when economy grows we come we come to know when the cons consumption of automotive fuel like diesel goes up we know the the nation is progressing so broadly petrochemical industry we can divide into two segments one is exploration and production and second is the refining for the purpose of our topic of wastewater treatment both these segments of petrochemical industry uses 
huge quantity of fresh water for exploration purpose and for the refining purpose. So this is the slides talks about the three major category, two major categories, crude oil field, which is used in the production and exploration stage and the refinery, which uses fresh water with the refining process. Third category is a smaller one, which is the petrochemical related uh, industry other than exploration and production and refinery. Now the water coming out used uh, this uh, exploration and production industry, which is involved in the crude oil production uses huge quantity of water and uh, it there ultimately it results into uh, generation of lot of uh, waste water and it contains emulsified crude oil because crude oil comes out from the beneath of the earth in uh, under pressure mixed with water in an emulsion form it and it has lot of impurities like polymers benzenes ph uh, heavy mineral waters mineral oil radioactive material so and so forth for today's purpose the window uh, window to discuss for discussion is small we will focus on the wastewater treatment in the refinery segment the wastewater sources of the refinery has been broadly we according to the source we classify under four segments one is process water and steam which comes from the distillation unit to whisk breaker unit catalytic cracking unit coker unit so and so forth in these segments the wastewater generate has the highest content of the pollutants the reason behind there is a direct contact between the water or steam and hydrocarbon next is cooling water it has little exposure to the direct hydrocarbon and can be easily recycled back storm water by nature is 100% pure as it comes from the nature but when in the refinery premises it comes in the on contact with oil on the ground it gets polluted but the quantum of pollution is less and the fourth category is sanitary waste sewage water which is generated from the administrative block washroom canteen etc and it co contains the least amount of contamination so whatever water we get from in the petrochemical industry particularly from the uh, this uh, refinery segment we treat it and the treatment is classified under two processes one is pre treatment and another is advanced uh, treatment the objective of the pre treatment is to reduce the load for on the water for treatment when it goes for the subsequent stages of advanced treatment there are certain steps we follow for wastewater treat wastewater treatment in the refinery segment. First is input. We have discussed in the previous slide that water is generated from the four streams in the refinery broadly. And we have also seen some streams has the highest pollutants and some of the streams has the very minimum pollutants and almost negligible. Then, then there is no point in mixing all the streams together and send it for the treatment because it will increase the load on the wastewater treatment process and that will cost money. So it is better to segregate the wastewater according to their sources and treat them separately. Once the streams are available, we separate the solid particles. There are several methods we'll be touching upon. Once the solid particles is separated oil is removed there are procedure and systems for oil removal once the solid particles are removed oil is removed water is available and it is treated this water removal once this water is removed it is the last stage it will we dispose of the treated water as per the standard and laid down rules and regulation of the environmental uh, regulations but in this process we generate a lot of flocks and sludge where we use precipitant so there are standard procedures also for this flock separation and disposal sludge also is separated dehydrated either incinerated or disposed of through proper standard way 
So this first water treatment, we were talking about the advanced uh, treatment. There, there can be either one or a combination of the following three processes. Physical treatment, chemical treatment, and biological treatment. All these systems can will be discussed in the technical, uh, I presume, in the technical segment of this webinar. In the refinery segment, we, in brief, we, uh, um, here we are trying to summarize the activities of the wastewater treatment in the refinery segment, depending upon the source and the pollutants. Like the water coming from the process unit, as we have said in the previous slides, like uh, distillation unit, uh, waste breaker unit, uh, catalytic cracking unit, so and so forth, it has oil in it. And the, the water contains a lot of oils, phenol, BOD, COD. So we treat them through physical and biological methods. Merox unit, caustic wash unit has a wastewater which has a lot of chemical waste like phenols, sulfides, oils, BOD, COD. Those are subjected to the chemical and biological process. The tank forms generates tank drains which has some dissolved solids and liquids. Those are treated through physical and biological process on case-to-case -case basis. The DM water plant, tank farm process unit, all gather storm water, which has little bit of uh, suspended solid, dissolved solid, and less amount of uh, oil in that. We separate through, preferably through physical methods. And as we have said, the fourth category of stream in the refinery has the sanitary waste, which is generated from the washrooms, canteen, administrative offices. They have a BOD requirement, which we treat through the biological treatment process. And here we come to the conclusion. The basic objective is to reduce the quantum of fresh water in the process, whether it is a uh, um, exploration and production activity or it is the refining process and at the end we try to recover maximum amount of water for so that it can be recycled back into the system and preferably for the on-site operation and for that purpose we have to identify a correct treatment technology and since petrochemical it is a business the process or technology we identify has to be cost effective. So ultimate goal is the ensuring for a petroleum business, we have to ensure profitability and generate, uh, treat the wastewater in such a way that we are compliance with the statutory and rules and regulation of the Environment Act. However, as has been told in the previous two presentations, the ultimate goal is ZLD, zero liquid discharge. Thank you. Mr. Dutta, please go to next. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Vishas. Your presentation, actually, your address touched me a lot because I belong to island gas sector. So, uh, there, are, there is another unit, I think uh, you uh, know better than me, that is the sulfur recovery unit, which is yes. which generates a yes. lot yes. of wastewater and yes. very hazardous wastewater. So, your presentation, I thank you on behalf of the IEI West Bengal Center for such a nice presentation. It was a brief and to the point. Right. The credit, so, credit I know. Credit goes to yeah. Professor Brahma, who has told me very clearly the, about the time management. I am thankful to him. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. So, I now request Professor S.K. Das uh, to present his, uh, to start his address and requesting uh, Mr. Thakur from NSDF to kindly give uh, Professor Das to the, the presentation uh, access.
Yeah, Professor Das, right now uh, you are you have been uh, made the presenter. So can you just uh, share your screen and start your address? Sir, uh, Professor Das, kindly, uh, yeah, kindly unmute yourself. Kindly unmute yourself. Uh, you you have been unmuted from organizer side, uh, so you need to unmute from your side as well. Sir, you unmute. I mean, on the screen you will see you will see the uh, the bottom left corner. There is a uh, microphone symbol. Dr. Ghosh, Dr. Ghosh, can you can you share your screen or uh, Mr. Thakur, can you share your screen and to show the uh, Professor Das that uh, where to click to unmute his unmute his, his microphone. No, no, no. Sir, Mr. Thakur, can you can you just open your this thing? Headphone, sir, please remove your headphone. Please. You just, uh, I mean, uh, you open your jet. Hello. I think there is there is some uh, there is some network issue at uh, at, at his end. So uh, let me let me proceed with Professor Bromo. Uh, let me proceed with Professor Bromo for his presentation. And uh, for uh, Brom uh, Professor Bromo, can you can you share your screen or I will I will share uh, from my side the presentation. I mean I will be I will be in trouble with uh, to share. So you show me. You show me your skin. Hello, Oniman. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Hear you? Yes, I can hear you. Can you? Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Yeah. Then they, you show. You show the slides. Okay, so Mr. Thakur, give me the presentation uh, access, and uh, I I will uh, run the slideshow, and uh, Prophet Bromo will uh, deliver his address. Yeah.
Good afternoon, everybody. So I'll be talking on. Can you hear me? Am I yes, audible? Yes, we can hear you. We can. We can Hello. hear. Can you hear me? Hello. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Please carry on, sir. Yeah. Okay. So you share my slide. Only my. Just a moment. Yeah, just a moment. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I have seen. I have seen. I have seen that my slide. Okay. Okay. So good afternoon, yes, everybody. Presentation mode. Okay. Slideshow mode. Yeah. Can I start? Yeah, you can. You can start. Yeah. Can you hear me, everybody? Good afternoon, everybody. It's a very long time struggle that we have managed uh, till my my slides are coming, and so I'm just uh, talking a very short and very restrictive manner regarding the involvement of algae and uh, its use in the wastewater treatment and how uh, important this thing that is still not being used uh, in so many cases except the Western world. Now, uh, Louis Pasteur said uh, 100 years ago once that you cannot underestimate the power of microbes. And today we have seen that corona is also belongs to microbes. And according to the increase of the size and the species, algae belongs to microbes as well as the primitive plant groups, that is a volbox and cyanobacteria, means green algae or green bacteria or, uh, or sunlight involve the bacteria. Now the question is how we are finding these bacteria so important or so called these algae so important in wastewater. Now, you see, our objective is very clear. In the preamble, I have also described the very uh, short and precise manner. What is our objective? Our objective to describe the even the uh, so-called the three-fourth of the global uh, the world water consumption in ocean we have only very minimum part of water for our use. As I have shown, this is the next slide, the global water distribution, that the, that the, the ocean 97% and from there the 25% is coming out as usable water. From there, how the glacial, how the groundwater, how the permafrost, uh, frost, that means frost, making in the wind, uh, winter and how the fresh water uh, takes from there to our at least a very, very minimum part of drinkable water, so-called use, uh, usable water or potable water. Now, the question is uh, why it is so becoming important? Because, you see, we have just crossed the third world where we corona and we are slowly, slowly coming over, perhaps it will take one or two more years, Corona. But the next, the next is the water crisis, the global water crisis to be controlled. Now, how to control that a lot of discussion already been uh, covered by Dr. Ashim Bhattach, by engineer Shishanta Roy, by um, uh, so-called uh, our uh, engineer, uh, Kumar Vishwas uh, is a very uh, 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 illustrative and uh, very precisely all the technology at present uh, used in India as well as the global scenario. Now, my objective to use wastewater also for the algae and algae could be considered both for food, future food, for medicine as well as uh, for oil. So these are the three criteria, when oil means energy, these are the most three important criteria can be solved by algae. So we can use these algae both for the wastewater treatment as well as the mass which will be collected from the algae uh, can be utilized in different manner. Next slide, please. Anyone? Can you show me the next slide? Yeah. So now here you can see 
this is the macroscopical view because I am basically involved in the fundamental studies and their relation with the macros as well as the algae. The, my relation is to understand how they are becoming so important. Now the important is that the algae is growing under sunlight and CO2. Some of the bacteria, cyanobacteria, or in case of bioleaching, you can see the bacteria is using CO2, cyanobacteria is using CO2. Why CO2 is becoming important? Because the CO2 is the major cause of global warming. So we can take that CO2 both for the growth of algae, at the same time utilizing this algae for wastewater treatment as well as for our medicine, for our um, energy, and also for the food in future. So you can see in the diagram how fantastically it has been described. The sunlight and so-called the microbial, uh, the pollution and the global warming caused by the pollution of the thermal plant and that three things can be captured by the algae and what it can give, it can give energy, it can give the fertilizer, it can give uh, also the food and etc. Cetera, et cetera. So you see the importance of algae is increasing slowly, slowly towards our environment as well as for our sustainability. Now the word the sustainability has been explained by um, engineer Kumar as well as by Dr. Bhatchach as well as Mr. Shishanto Roy, um, uh, that the, what is the sustainability? The sustainability is that, that if it continue without any side effect, that means we have to understand the concept of green, concept of um, the, the survivability of the mankind as well as the uh, animal kingdom, uh, basically, and that the scarcity of water could be a major cause of a threat as again we i can uh, reiterate that the fourth world war can be caused only for water crisis now next slide please anyone please next slide anyone next slide yeah now the here i have shown some of the uh, activities of the algae uh, in industry and the, uh, the number of uh, what you can say uh, the reactors are so called the mode of reactors to be utilized uh, uh, for capturing CO2 as well as um, uh, in the process of wastewater and to give that the algae um, uh, for, uh, for, uh, for uh, what you can say for food and fertilizer. There are a lot of process you can see here that the connected of several um, uh, open pond, but the main problem on open pond is that it requires huge amount of land. And the bioreactor at the same time is being utilized by, by the most of the industries where you can uh, restrict the, uh, the land uh, land properties as well as the area of the land utilization and in the photobioreactor artificially you can develop the light, control the light and the type of algae. You see there are many types of algae existing in the world and that is also another aspect of my studies to understand which algae will be more efficient both in wastewater treatment, both uh, or uh, in uh, in food and energy. Uh, uh, compared to food and energy is that for energy we don't need any pure algae or non-toxic algae. In food or so-called medicine we need a non-toxic and a pure algae. So this is our fundamental studies of so-called in instead of genetic engineering uh, we have, uh, I have established, I'll be coming back, a photobioreactor, which is uh, for the fundamental studies, uh, um, uh, calculated based on the time, uh, the light effect, uh, the flow, dynamics, as well as the water, how it has been uh, to be maintained, 
uh, the contamination, prevention of contamination, because another question, question of algae is that whenever the algae is growing, there are a lot of other contamination may, may come uh, in the open pond, which is, uh, 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 therefore, we have considered the open pond only for the energy and CO2 capture. But for medicine, for food, we have to be very careful that these algae, although it can be utilized for the CO2 capture, but is it's not efficiently like the open pond, but it can provide us a, a future food and medicine. Next slide, please. Anyone? Yeah. So this is the bioreactor that I have designed in the left side. You can see the bioreactor I have designed. And second is the photobioreactor that we, my student and myself also designed. Or so called, he, uh, he has developed, he is a very, very innovative concept of uh, the uh, photobioreactor design. As name, uh, I can mention you that is Aninda, uh, Aninda Mahapatra. I, I have informed him also to uh, be present in the seminar and also e certificate to uh, procure. And this is the bioreactor uh, that he has done with the light. And this is the bioreactor. I have also made this thing also with the light, but not so vigorous light effect as on, um, uh, on Indo with consultation with my uh, support of the uh, uh, process technology or so called unit operation, how the uh, water will be flowing and so and so. He has designed that, and mine is in the reactor. So, why I have done this thing? Because he, in the light effect, I can concentrate the growth very carefully. Here, it is uh, overnight uh, a running process where uh, you can see, the, observe the clump, all the growing algae is uh, attached in the floor. And that floor is a, is a perforated floor where the water is uh, flowing and coming down and going up and et cetera, et cetera. All the process can be schematically present. And that, that uh, I have uh, restricted uh, to, 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 to make uh, the presentation in the, in, the, in the restricted time. So here is the bioreactor, here is the pH meter, here is the oxygen. Oxygen means uh, dissolved oxygen measurement. One of the most important aspects of the wastewater treatment is the dissolved oxygen. That means BOD and COD. That means chemical oxygen demand and biological oxygen demand varies on um, uh, which part of uh, wastewater is coming, either it is a food industries, then the BOD will be high, uh, COD will be low, or if it is coming from the pharmaceutical industries and chemical industry, petrochemical industry, your COD will be high and compared to BOD. There are a lot of things in mathematical uh, observations is existing. Here is the uh, part and parcels, and you can take the slides also with you, to observe here the part and parcels of the reactor being described here, so I can proceed in the next slide. Only one, please. Now, my objective here was to see how these algae are growing in my reactor as well as in um, Anindo Mahapatra's reactor. So we have taken that, uh, and I have prepared this slide. We have taken the how the oil seeds can be growing. Now we can see here the oil seeds is growing. And if you enlarge the, 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 the plate and, and, and the observation, you can see many, many these types of seeds are growing. And, uh, and that proves that these algae is competent to make um, oil seeds. And you can extract these oil seeds according to the process that I'm not going here. And you can extract the oil from the algae. Compared to Gatrofa, uh, algae gives a 10,000 or 1,000 times more algae, uh, more oil, um, uh, biodiesel, or so-called bio oil, um, compared to Gatrofa. Moreover, uh, algae is uh, very efficient that it doesn't need any uh, trans esterification. That means if you extract the oil from uh, from from Jatropha, you need um, the oil to be transesterified. Mine means your ester portions from the oil should be recovered by means of K 
chemical as well as the biological treatment. In this algae system, you don't need any transesterification. You go direct this oil to use in the machine. So this is the, there are a lot of efficiencies and a lot of um, the preferences are given in the algae treatment as well as its advancement. So please kindly note that the algae in future could be really a, a mankind saver. That means food, energy, as well as the, uh, as well as, uh, the fertilizer, also called um, uh, your uh, medicine. Um, this is the another uh, the reactor design that I partially constructed. And now, um, if uh, after after uh, after lockdown or so called uh, COVID, uh, when the college will be open, I will be trying. If it is at all existing in my laboratory, I don't know. Uh, I'll be coming back to our my laboratory, uh, uh, including Professor uh, S. Bashu's the achievements with the hand pump reactors and so uh, with the reverse osmosis. But here I have tried to show, and uh, uh, carefully if you observe, the all the system in the control process, uh, 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 mixing as well as the photo reaction process is connected and where uh, all the byproducts can be separated automatically. So next slide, please. Animan. Next slide. Yeah, now in my glue, Professor Bashu is there, and uh, along with his hand pump, and he is uh, describing how the hand pump is moving, and his representation already been published in uh, Telegraph, and that it is uh, one of the cost-effective uh, membrane system can be utilized in villages as well as, but the reason is why. The reason is that this membrane pump can be utilized um, to decontaminate the arsenic, one of the biggest challenge in our society as well as in Bangladesh, how uh, uh, these uh, arsenic are making uh, a tremendous um, uh, uh, human health hazards um, uh, and causing cancer. So whatever Shushanto said that we have to be also careful uh, in the medical aspects of, uh, of water so that water purification, one of the biggest challenge remains for us, not only the potable water, so for washing and so, other most important thing is the drinkable water. So we must be very careful regarding the drinkable water and technological innovation day by day uh, is increasing. As um, Dr. Bhatchaj already said, um, uh, that, that there are membrane ports uh, from micro uh, to ultra uh, to nano and to re reverse osmosis is a varying. That means it becoming smaller to smaller and smaller where the ions of salt ions can be also captured as well as the, uh, the, the toxic heavy metals can also be observed. More, most important is that these toxic um, uh, metals uh, arsenic, copper, and uh, magnesium, um, uh, uh, silver, silver is uh, not so very um, uh, acute problem, but anyhow, um, uh, this uh, lead, uh, copper, and arsenic, these are the very important toxic elements uh, which is uh, being uh, uh, dissolved or uh, remaining in water, and so we are uh, drinking this water or not only we are careful now, but uh, previously we, we used that and now most of the 80% are so called the village people are drinking that type of um, uh, aqua, non-aqua uh, got uh, filtered water, uh, which uh, causes uh, the contamination of these three types of, um, the three types of heavy metals, that may arsenic is one of them. But they remain in the complex, so we have to also understand the arsenic uh, position three and plus, where the um, five is uh, arsenic five is precipitable, and that can be uh, filtered by the by the by the membrane, and uh, that 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 concept Professor Basu took and uh, they uh, um, designed hand pump uh, membrane reactor. That means uh, through hand pump, uh, the pressure will be increased, 
and in 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 the context of pressure drop uh, the water will be filtered so um, uh, and the same can be utilized in the villages is a very low cost uh, system which i have already mentioned in the preamble that we have considered about the low cost and appropriate system and that proves also my guru professor uh, sharojit basu is a renowned professor everybody knows about his uh, credibility uh, uh, worldwide desalination to uh, uh, arsenic uh, removal and all these things with the help of membrane that mbst membrane based separation technology so next slide please anybody so i am now in the last uh, last um, slide uh, i have to say why it is gone now hello anivan yeah again you are coming down to uh, last side yeah last yeah this is the professor bashu uh, in my lab taking the viva of the students and asking a very nice questions a very fundamental he is a so nice fundamental person uh, i believe the india must go first in the fundamental and following professor bashu his concept of so called um, uh, i my personal observation uh, to take in the large aspects of industrial application and with that i thank you and waiting for any questions regarding algae if comes i am ready to answer thank you very much anubha yeah thank you thank you professor bromo uh, so uh, now uh... question and answer session will be taken up at the uh, after all the presenters yes, I, know, I, know, I know i know i know so uh, definitely you have demonstrated an excellent piece of innovation or uh, i must say invention so uh, this actually uh, should become a part of the make in india initiative yeah yeah <laughs> so i thank you although you are uh, not only a speaker you are the organizer you you yourself is the organizer of the program so right now uh, i request uh, professor sk das uh, professor das can, can you can you hear us uh, where, where where is the doctor abhijit doctor abhijit actually Hello, he is in doctor abhijit he will be joining why once he finishes he will be joining Professor Das, can you can you uh, unmute yourself and can you please uh, on switch on your uh, webcam? Yes. Professor Das, can you can you hear us? Yeah. so can you we can hear you we can hear you so can you please share your webcam as well Professor Das, can you start? Yeah. Mr. Thakur, Mr. Thakur, can you make Professor Das as the presenter? Professor S K Das, Professor S K Das. Yeah. Professor Das, you have been given. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, can you can you just start sharing your screen? I mean, sharing your presentation. Can you start screen sharing? Your screen is not getting shared. Can you can you just? Yeah, there is one sharing. Yeah, your screen. There is there has been one pop up, one screen pop up, uh, so that you can start sharing the screen. Mr. Dotto, you just take the the presentation of Professor Das and you show it on behalf of him. Yeah, but I'm not having that the, his presentation with me. Uh, Doctor Gold, are you having are you having his presentation with you? Yes, pardon me. Professor Das, can you please uh, remove remove your uh, headphone? I mean, just uh, you 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 talk to through your uh, laptop. <laughs> Yes, we can. We can hear you. We can hear you, but we are not being able to see your screen. So, if you. Yeah, we can hear you, but uh, some uh, issue in the in the audio quality. But we can hear you. If you can, if you can start sharing your screen, then you can. Then it it, it can be started. Oh, 
your voice is breaking your voice is not coming at all i i think there are a lot of connectivity issue at the end of professor das actually we are not neither we are getting any uh, screen or not we are my even getting his voice uh, clearly so uh, yeah yeah so there are uh, so i do not think uh, professor uh, dr obijit dos has joined because he had some other commitments so i think he could not uh, join back so now there are a few questions we to, we have received that uh, i i am reading out the questions so uh, the panel in front of the panelist and uh, the first question is which we which have been taken that is that can you kindly elaborate the process steps for getting hydrolyquid discharge certification So this question, I think, the yeah. So this question can be written up by I think Professor Bhattacharya. Doctor Bhattacharya is. Uh, in the panel or he has he is he has left so i i request uh, either uh, mr rai or uh, mr bishwas can you please uh, answer this pen question is that can you uh, kindly elaborate the process steps for zero liquid discharge certification i think uh... you leave it to because this is uh, not too precisely pertain to our uh, industry it's better if professor roy can explain about this i think that will be better idea yeah okay so i would uh, i would request the uh, person who has raised this question to get in touch with the with professor uh, bhattacharya dr bhattacharya one to one so that uh, it can be taken up offline so the next question is do our industries know the water footprints of their produce so this is also i think uh, it can be taken up by uh, mr bishwas and uh, mr rai jointly that uh, 
do our industries know the water footprints of their produce to be precise uh, we go by the standard set uh, in the uh, environmental issues and we go according to that right thank you uh, mr vishwas the next question is uh, what are the limitations of incumbent incumbent treatment methods so i think the, this can also be this could have also be answered by uh, dr bhattacharya as he is now not in the panel uh so i i skip on this question and the next is that are these technologies feasible to remove microplastics so professor bromo can you answer this question i think he is also offline right now so another another thing which is directly which is directly which is directed to mr vishwas that is what is the most tough waste in petro industry can you repeat the question yeah what is the most toughest i mean the toughest waste in petro industry i think the it is it is directed to the waste water only so yeah. i believe it is the from which which unit or which circuit the most critical uh, quantum of waste water comes out in the petro and oil and gas sector it's a very brilliant question but as we have explained the quantity of uh, pollutant contained in the waste water of the petroleum industry depends upon the industry uh unit through which it is coming and during the discussion we have quoted about some of the units starting from the distillation units up to secondary processing units now there are there uh, is no uh, since the refineries are different from uh, uh, in configuration from one location to another and they process a different kind of particular uh, crude so it is really difficult to exactly pinpoint which one is the toughest one from one crude one configuration one particular pollutant may be critical for that refinery for the another refinery which is based on another configuration and which is processing a different kind of crude say nigeria or mexico their content and content in the west water will be different so it has to be seen case to case basis it cannot be generalized right yeah thank you thank you mr vishwas uh, i think the it has been answered adequately the question so and I, i i am not seeing the other panelists right now so we are skipping the rest of the questions although those questions are very important and i thank all the uh, attendees who have raised these very much pertinent questions so uh, i think we should uh, now uh, go for uh, winding up before winding up i as a moderator i would like just like to share uh, two or three points uh unfortunately uh, there are due to some technical glitch and some uh, connectivity issues at the at various ends uh we had to face uh, some few pro few issues but uh, overall uh, we had a lot a galaxy of presenters uh, who shared their experience industrial as well as academic experiences with us and i thank them all so and uh, mr uh, susan mr dr uh, dr bhattacharya he has elaborated on the membrane and separation uh, technology and uh, with his both his industrial and from an academic experiences and that was a very from the technological perspective that was a very uh, elaborative and uh, 
knowledge sharing session then uh, mr roy he has pointed out the he has uh, very nicely uh, made a comparative study for the different uh, segment of industries uh, right starting from the thermal power plant oil and gas as well as steel plant uh, various waste generating units of this uh, plants and uh, percentage wise where they stand that comparative study is uh, very important informative and he has also uh, he has thrust upon the role of the society and the engineering fraternity on the on account of wastewater treatment and mr vishwas uh, he very briefly he has touched upon the challenges wastewater challenges for the oil and gas and uh, oil and gas sector as a whole oil and gas and petrochemical sector as a whole and also he has uh, entered into the upstream mid midstream and stream segments and with the covering the nature of wastewater generated from these all these three segments and uh, professor bromho he has uh, very lucidly he has uh, demonstrated the technology which he, which he is developing and definitely this is a very this could have been a very uh, great feat in the step of making india initiative and uh, we could not uh, properly get the address of professor sk dash due to the connectivity issue it is very unfortunate on our part that uh, it it could not be uh, done so i now request uh engineer kp dash honorary secretary of west bengal state center to kindly place the vote of thanks thank you everyone am i audible everyone yes you are audible thank you very much uh respected dignitaries ladies and gentlemen a very good evening to all of you it's my i deem it to be great pleasure and pride privilege to extend my sincere thanks and gratitude to all the distinguished panelists and participants in this technical webinar on the theme waste water treatment and sustainable sustainable development arranged or organized by our engineering division of west bengal state center uh, through this online platform as because due to abnormal situation prevailing in this lockdown period to resist covid 19 outbreak at the outset i convey my thanks to all the panelists mr kumar vishal who is a former joint director petroleum planning and analysis cell ministry of petroleum and natural gas government of india sir sk raj former head of the department chemical engineering department university of calcutta our convener professor n k brahmo is also the visiting professor of institute of genetic engineering kolkata and also the former professor of iit kharagpur i also convey my thanks to dr arjun kumar bhattacharya executive director and uh, of academy of water technology and environment management kolkata mr sushant kumar ra former chief manager mama lorry and company limited kolkata who have very nicely and very elaborately what already uh, mentioned by uh, moderated by 
uh, on it one what they have discussed and thank you all the panelists for their nice deliberation uh, webinar on wastewater treatment for sustainable development my sincere thanks are due to my colleagues Sri Shondip Kumar Dev, Chairman of West Bengal State, the Convener of our Chemical Engineering Division, the, the Professor N. K. Brahmo, and Convener of our Mechanical Engineering Division, Mr. Anirban Dratto, who has also been, who has moderated this today's program. I convey my thanks to all the members of the council, all the members of the state committee of West Bengal State Center. I special thanks, I convey my special thanks, really special thanks to Director Technical and his team to take pain to organize and to make it success uh, of this today's technical webinar. My sincere thanks to all the team members of National Skill Development Forum of Institution of Engineers who has very nicely arranged the program. Last but not the least, my thanks are due to all who are behind the screens and their silent support of today's centenary technical webinar. Thank you all for giving me a patient hearing. Thank you, uh, Engineer K.P. Dash. So now we uh, end the session, today's session. So uh, I now request uh, our National Skill Development Forum uh, to uh, kindly end the session. Thank you. Uh, and, and, uh, may I do any announcement? How the people will, how the participant will get certificate? Is there? Project is there? Project. Project from IAI? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm there. Uh, uh, just uh, how the participant will get their certificates? It is my uh, question. Yes. Uh, yes, sir. Within five working days, you'll get it. Okay, just this is an announcement to all the participants who have registered themselves for uh, and pay fees for a certificate. They will get within five days after consolidation of the signing the certificate. It is for the participants actually about. I mean, we are uh, very much thankful to the participants about 300 uh, or has joined today's program. Yes. On even. Okay. So I now request uh, uh, NSDF officials to kindly uh, end the session. Yes. Is it all right, Shruji? Yes. Sir. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, sir. You just thank you, sir. Uh can you share the YouTube link? Uh, Mr. Dakur, can Okay, okay then. For all the participants who are still there, all the panelists who are still there, you just search National Development Forum uh, and you will
थैंक्स थैंक्स जब क्लोज